to Kate's 5-2 Lockdown Live. This is my first Facebook Live video in the time that we've been in lockdown. And I wanted to talk to you this evening to give you a few ideas and some tips on how to approach your fasting and healthy eating. Stuff that isn't relevant just in lockdown, but, but can help you stay on track for the rest of your life and to stay healthy and lose weight. I also want to be completely upfront about what we do and don't know. Um, and what we know about COVID-19 is pretty limited right now. I'm not a doctor, but even the doctors are struggling to tell ex exactly many, many of the factors that we really would like to know about what's going on with this disease that has changed all of our lives. But I also want to be really positive and to be here and to enjoy the sense of community we've got. So if you are watching, please do add your comments in the comment bar. Um, and some of those comments and questions I'll be able to feature a bit later on. This is a bit of an experiment. I haven't done, as I say, this uh, lockdown live using this technology before, but hopefully it will be something that you find useful and interesting. Um, we are going to be kicking off with looking a little bit about how you can stay safe in this current situation. And then we're going to be moving on to doing a variety of tips and ideas on your health and how to protect that while you are fasting and why it's really important more than ever that you need to be enjoying a healthy lifestyle, um, how it can help protect you from some of the worst effects if you do happen to get this virus. We're going to talk about motivation and then at the end of the sequence, we're going to also offer you the option of answering, of asking some questions, uh, which I'll be able to put up on the screen. Um, I'm really grateful, especially to all of our members in the 5.2 Facebook group who are essential workers. So that's obviously anyone working in the front line in the health service, anyone who's helping to supply the food that we, I think, took for granted until all of this happened and uh, delivering uh, things, helping with our children's education, helping all the essentials run that really without them, we'd be in a lot more trouble. So thank you very much. And thank you all of you for um, turning up here tonight and we'll see what we can um, what we can get going this evening as I pull up some of the graphics. Um, so I'm, I've got these various graphics that I've made, which will help us to uh, guide us through and give me a little bit of a reminder. But it does mean <laughs> that occasionally if my eye darts off, that's why. So the first thing we want to talk about really is staying safe and that is incredibly important at the moment. Um, as I said at the beginning, so much is unknown about COVID-19 and the virus that causes this disease, including whether intermittent fasting of the kind that we do in 5-2 and other fasting diets may affect the disease, either positively or negatively. We just don't know. There's so much research going on internationally, bringing the top scientists together right now but we don't know whether fasting um, may help us uh, build our defenses against the virus or even possibly we don't know yet whether fasting could make us more vulnerable i think it's really important to be completely upfront about that because it's simply the case that you know we just don't know um however the thing that we do know is that being a healthy weight is more important than ever so for many years, we've known that um, being overweight or being obese has a negative impact on your health. Now, that doesn't mean that if you aim to stay fit and you aim to eat the right things, you can't still be a pretty healthy person. But being overweight increases your risk of all sorts of conditions, including diabetes type 2, which is the reason I started fasting in the first place, because it's a really common thing in my family and I've seen the effect it can have. It can also affect cardiovascular system. And now we are seeing that a lot more people who are overweight or obese who contract COVID-19 seem to suffer the more severe side effects. That is not a reason to beat yourself up or to be scared, but it is a reason to take action. Fasting, intermittent fasting, 5-2, whatever you want to call it, 
is a strategy that you can use as part of your efforts to maintain and reach a healthy weight. It's something that I have been using and relying on for nearly eight years this summer and it and it's made a real difference to my life but it's not for everyone so if you're new to fasting keep watching and stay in the 5-2 group because you'll get some fantastic advice there but remember it's just part of a strategy it's something that you can use sensibly and sustainably to help you achieve what you want which is to be a healthy weight obviously we all want to look good as well and uh, I'm a lot happier with clothes so I'm not happy with how I look now but the main thing has always been for me about health and um, I hope that you will understand why that is something that's incredibly important to all of us right now having said that there are some red flags around fasting and you should be really aware of those so that includes the fact that if you've had previous eating disorders that may still be unresolved especially at the more serious end you should consult an expert before starting to do any kind of fasting because it might lead to some more obsessive behaviours. There are other conditions, so if you have an ongoing illness um, that you're not sure might, might be compatible with fasting, if you are on certain medications that have to be taken with food especially, and if you're really quite ill, you should talk to a medical professional before undergoing any kind of dietary change, and that's really important. Having said all that about staying safe, I think we can move on to thinking about some of the ideas and some of the tips that will really help you if you are either giving 5-2 a go for the first time, or I know from having looked in the group, quite a lot of us are going back to it after a period of time, maybe bearing in mind some of that stuff about how important our health is and keeping a healthy weight is to being in the best condition to fight this disease. So, what we're going to look at now is my uh, tips and I will just scroll through while I find them um, because it will help us navigate things um, and we've got some really nice messages already in the group keep posting and especially keep posting your questions because I'll come to those at the end so my first tip when it comes to health and fasting right now is to aim for the healthiest diet you have ever eaten and that is on fasting days and it's also on non-fasting days we know that whatever weight you are at the moment, giving your body the nutrients that it needs is really important to keep it in the best condition it can be. And one of the most important um, issues in that, and especially on a fast day, is to keep aiming for those five a day. It really does make a big difference if you can be um, eating really healthy produce, because you know if you're not managing to do that, I'm just trying to get this to change now so that I can actually, uh, you can actually see this in a bigger picture. Uh, swap it around that way. There we go. Um, so the five a day, we hear it all the time. Um, and you might think, oh, been there, done that, tried it. The thing about the five a day is that it, it's achieving lots of different things. It is uh, filling you up because fruit and veg are much um, more filling than some of the other energy dense foods like um, fats and carbohydrates, pure kind of white carbohydrates like bread and pasta and rice. They, you get a lot more bang for your calorie buck on fast days, especially with um, fruit and veg. And as well as it being more filling, a nice portion or several portions of fruit and veg will also provide a lot of the phytonutrients that help to keep all of your body systems working, including your immune system, which is really important at the moment. You may also have heard the whole phrase about eating a rainbow. And the reason for that is that um, we're suggesting that you eat within your fruit and veg. You don't eat the only only the foods of the same colours. So, uh, I don't know, eating all apples or eating all green vegetables, broccoli and greens, they're all really healthy in their own right. But each one of those different coloured fruit and vegetables has a different property. And those little phytonutrients are able to supply different aspects of your system. So fruit and veg that is coloured yellow, for example, uh, often assists your vision. Uh, red, so this might be tomatoes, would contain lycopene, which has been shown to benefit the cardiovascular system. So if you are eating 
a rainbow of fruit and veg, trying to eat as many different colours, bit of a challenge, also looks nice on the plate every single day, you are ensuring that you're getting more of that, um, those different phytochemicals, phytonutrients. The other thing that fruit and veg really give you is that whole issue of fiber. So we know that fiber is really important. It keeps you regular. And a lot of people who start off on fasting find that because they're eating a bit less, actually their digestion might slow up. The fiber helps to keep that going. The other good thing about fiber is that it can really benefit uh, the gut bacteria. So we know now, we didn't know this even 20 years ago, that your health and especially your immune system are really benefited by having a very diverse set of bugs in your gut, in your digestive system. They can produce all sorts of beneficial effects on the body when you've got the right ones. And the good ones love a bit of fiber. So the more fiber you can have, the better. I'm just seeing a comment here from Sarah in the comments. Um, I might just hide this for a minute or at least, um, yeah, there we go. So Sarah is saying that she tends to stay away from fruit, fruit on fast days for some reason. So. I would say that one of the things that often we advise on a fasting day is berries, if you like them. So that can be fresh berries, but it could also be frozen berries, which are often a cheaper way of getting all the benefits that ber berries offer. So they tend to be a bit lower in sugar than some of the other fruits like uh, berry, sweet apples or bananas, for example. They are also much easier to do a portion control of. So you can have a small portion quite easily. Um, whereas if you've got a ginormous apple or a really big banana, um, it's a bit hard just to set it aside after you've had half of those. Um, but trying to include some fruit in your day is a really good thing. Another fruit that really works well for people on a fast day is a kiwi fruit. Small. Um, it's lovely and zingy, got a really strong flavour, quite fun to eat. <laughs> I always eat it like a boiled egg. And the other thing is that some people struggle to sleep after they've had their first fa few fast days. Kiwi has been shown to actually help sleep. So it's one of those things you can eat as a snack not long before you go to bed. Uh, you get that nice fresh flavour and it can help you sleep. In fact, I'm on a fast day today, might even have one before I go to bed because I know I've got one of those in the fruit bowl at the moment. So that's about uh, wanting to eat lots of fruit and veg. And the other thing to um, make the point of when I can find the graphic back again, here we go, is that it doesn't have to be fresh. So I was saying that berries, often they are cheaper, especially out of season, to get um, frozen. So And they freeze really well, especially uh, raspberries and blackberries and blueberries. So you can get all the benefits. You can just defrost a little bit. Um, at once and they don't go to waste. And that's the same with lots of fruit and veg. So uh, frozen vegetables are, can be a really cheap way of getting your veggies in. Uh, they're also easy to store. So if we get any issues with the supply chain at the moment, we seem to have gone past that now. Um, the problems we had in the earlier days of fasting, um, earlier days of lockdown rather, when we were struggling to get hold of stuff, um, having some veg in the freezer or some fruit uh, means you, you're always supplied even if the fresh stuff isn't coming through. The same with cans. I know that cans have been quite hard to get hold of at times, certain things, but uh, canned vegetables and especially canned pulses. So that could just be baked beans or it could be a can of chickpeas. You can make a salad, you can make hummus, you can use that to add some really fiber filled vegetable protein. And so that's a great thing to do. The final thing I would say about a healthy diet is obviously we want to be eating a diet that's rich in all of these different nutrients at the moment. Um, there is some evidence at the moment that uh, vitamin D, which we know can really help protect the immune system, is beneficial. If you get COVID-19, people seem to be showing better outcomes, i.e. getting less serious side effects if their vitamin D levels are nice and high. Now, we're coming out of the winter certainly in the northern hemisphere here and that means that the sunshine that we've been having in the UK especially um, recently hopefully is bringing our vitamin D levels back up again but having a vitamin D supplement could be really beneficial especially if you've got darker skin so people with darker skin find it harder to generate the vitamin D through sunshine 
it's a magic vitamin in that way. We can potentially get vitamin D just from going out in the sun uh, without sunscreen. But of course, there's a balance there too. So I would say at the moment that there's some really good advice and some really good research out there that suggests that um, taking a vitamin D supplement as part of the rest of your diet can be really beneficial. So there we go. That is health tip number one. Um, aim for the healthiest diet you've ever eaten. Just, just kind of up your game a bit here. And even if it's just trying one thing, which is um, say you're only managing two portions of fruit and veg a day at the moment, just move up to three. And try that for a week or two, um, look at introducing some of the fresh stuff we've got out there at the moment into your diet, even just an extra portion of frozen peas. <laughs> that can also just increase the fiber content, increase the nutrients you're getting in your diet and help you feel fuller, especially on a fasting day. So that is the first tip. Right, let's look at my next one finding the slide. I hope you're feeling forgiving me here while I look for these slides. Uh, as I say, a bit of an experiment. Now, the next one is really important. So this, this one here is an essential thing, I think, especially that we don't know that much about exactly how fasting might affect our um, possibly getting and certainly our, the process of COVID-19. Our body interprets any change as stress. Now, stress can be a good thing. If you think about the stress that it takes to build muscle, if you are starting to exercise for the first time, muscle is built by your body being put under stress. Uh, your legs, if you're starting to run for the first time, it feels quite tough at times to begin with. But over time, you build the muscle and you build your cardiovascular capacity. If you're running, I've done it myself. I've done the couch to 5K but it's really important not to overdo it. And the same is true of diet. While we're being sensible and we're not overdoing it, I would advise if you're starting to fast for the first time, or if you are going back to fasting after some time, that you do it as we suggest. <laughs> I mean, I would suggest this anyway, because we've got loads of wisdom in the group about how to do this. As I say, I've been doing this for almost eight years now. I, I've watched people do it I've watched what they achieve and I know that overdoing it is your fastest route to failure really and to maybe not making yourself very well I mean fasting is generally quite well tolerated by most people who are already in good health but you don't want at the moment when we're all under both mental and physical stress due to lockdown and due to the worries that about what's going to happen you don't want to increase your stress beyond what your body can tolerate so Let's look at some more of these. Do not overstress the body, especially avoid more than two fasts per week if you are new to this. Really, you know, you might think this is a quick fix. I'm going to get there this bit quicker if I go for three fasts or four fasts. Just give yourself a bit of time to get used to this and for your body to adjust. It's you're still going to see results if you do one or even two fasts a week. That's absolutely fine. But, you know, if you're going for three, you're making life quite difficult for yourself. Also, we talk about back to back fast. So this is where you might decide that actually your best fasting days um, are Monday and Tuesday. And you are going from one to the other. You're not having a normal eating day in between. That is OK. It can present a few challenges if you are new to it. Uh, because you're not used to some of the sensations that can go with fasting. There are things like maybe feeling a bit headachey at first, feeling a bit dehydrated. That's why we get people to drink a lot of water, because actually a lot of the water that you take in every day is not through drinking water, it's through your food. And if you're cutting back quite a lot, which you do on a fast day, you're not going to be as well hydrated. Sometimes people as well, you know, find it more of a mental challenge as much of a physical one. So if you're doing a back to back fast, it can mean that the second day is a really a bit of a challenge. You can try it, but we would certainly advise to start off with that. Maybe you have a, a break in between uh, easier physically and easier psychological psychologically. And we definitely don't recommend that you do more than two back to back. There are some fasting practitioners out there who do recommend it. And, you know, that's entirely up to them. But for us, it's we've determined that no more than two back to back is the right way to go. 
The final thing uh, that people sometimes forget about is what to do on a non-fasting day. And so what we generally advise with that is that you eat your TDEE on a non-fast day. And um, that is your the estimate of what your food, the food requirements that you're going to have um, on a normal day. And that would be to maintain your weight as it is. Now, if you think about it, you are managing to reduce your weight through 5-2 by having a calorie deficit, i.e. less than you need on the two fasting days. You don't need to cut back at all, or certainly nearly as much on your non-fasting days. This is the way that you're, you're going to be eating for life. So you do not want to be punishing yourself by saying, right, I'm gonna eat five, 600 calories on a fasting day, and then I'm going to go to a thousand on a non-fasting day, because it becomes a bit more like a punishment really it's not not what you want to be doing so we have got a calculator on the 52 diet book site you can go in there there are different calculators available but it will give you a rough idea of the number of calories you'd eat every day that would maintain your current weight and because you're achieving the deficit on the other days you are still going to lose weight um you can cut it back a bit you could cut back your tdae once you've once you've um estimated your total daily energy uh, expenditure, the estimate that we've made on there, you could cut it back by a couple of hundred calories, maybe, that would kind of speed things up a little bit. Um, but don't go mad. The other thing that's important to do, and uh, often people start exercising around the same time that they try and get healthy, is to be honest about the amount of activity because your energy expenditure, the number of calories you use up every day, depends on how active you are. Uh, if you are sitting around, uh, you're using less calories than you are when you're exercising, stands to reason. So when you go into the calculator, make sure that you do reflect the fact that you are exercising if you are, because that will give you a few more calories to play with and um, take that into account. So you won't end up feeling hungry because you're trying to put your body under too much stress. Because not only don't we know if that's going to be healthy for you, I mean, certainly pushing yourself too far is not gonna be healthy. It also makes the whole thing completely unsustainable. So we can have some questions about that later if you like, but overall the message here is yes, Fasting can put your body under a little bit of stress, um, and that's that's a good thing if you're otherwise healthy, but make sure you make the changes slowly and don't overdo it to start off with. So that is my next health tip. I'm gonna scroll to the next ones if I can find them. Here we go. What's that? Right. So the third one is especially important at the moment, of course. Um, we don't know at the moment uh, how many people are going to end up contracting COVID-19. And because we can't see often if people have got it, we also don't know um, whether you've caught it or not. So if you feel ill, it's really, really important that you listen to your body and don't fast if you start to have any kind of symptoms. And this actually applies whether you're um, whether we're in a time of pandemic or not. But right now, it's even more important to take notice. If you start feeling a bit unwell, keep an eye on it. Listen to what your body is telling you. Drink plenty of fluids and eat when you're hungry. Just kind of be kind to yourself. And this is overall my message when it comes to fasting generally. Punishing yourself does not work when it comes to weight loss. I know that. I struggled with my weight for years and years and years. And... I know that it was only when I started allowing myself to fail, um, but coming up with strategies that worked and imagining what life would be like when I was feeling better about myself and a healthier weight, did I succeed? So if you are feeling unwell, don't fast. And of course, in these current days, it's even more important to seek medical advice if you think you need it. Not only when it comes to COVID-19, we do know at the moment that some people are staying away from the health services because they're worried about um, the issues around um, going into a hospital, possibly uh, contracting the disease. But the good thing is that there are lots of provisions being made to enable us to access healthcare without having to go into a hospital. The most important thing to do is to 
be alert, listen to how you're feeling and to make sure that you are able to access that help and to get the help that you need. Um, yeah, uh, maybe some of the symptoms do add up to being this virus that's causing us such a lot of trouble at the moment. Maybe they're not, but you won't know unless you ask. So those are my main health tips uh, for now. And um, we can ask some questions about those later on. Um, but what I'd like to move on to now is thinking more about generally about motivation, because we all know that um, a diet is only go as good as your resolve and your motivation to change. And having been through this, as I say, I, I struggled with my weight for a very long time. And um, fasting is the first strategy that I've been able to stick to. Uh, some of you, if you've been in the group or you've read my books, will have, will have seen pictures. Um, but you know, this is uh, the kind of weight that I used to be. Um, and I wasn't very comfortable with it. I just really wasn't happy. Um, this is probably eight and a bit years ago now. And I knew that I was at risk of diabetes um, because of the parental involvement and also just because I was overweight. I was getting bigger year on year, which is something that we all experience quite a lot of the time. Uh, we need fewer calories, unfortunately, as we get older, it's really unfair. And um, I'm now uh, past 50 and I know that my calorie requirements get smaller. I honestly think if I didn't have fasting in my life, I would be a lot bigger than I am in that photograph. And actually, instead of that, I'm now a good two stone, 16 kilograms lighter than I was. And it's the first time I've been able to keep it off. And that is partly about finding a strategy that works. And it's also partly about learning lots of lessons around motivation. And those are some of the ones I want to share. And I'm not saying it's easy at the moment because so many of us who aren't key workers are at home with kids, with other family members who um, may not have any issues with their weight and therefore can eat exactly what they like and burn it off. So there's more temptations. You can also be a comfort eater. I freely admit that I am one of those. I eat uh, more sweet things or crave more sweet things at a time of uncertainty and of worry. And in fact, that is one of the things that I have been doing during lockdown. I find it much harder to resist on a non-fasting day. But what I have been doing is increasing my fasting days from my maintenance level, which used to be one day a week, I have always done that for my health and to maintain my weight loss. But quite a lot of day, of um, weeks now, I go up to two fast days. And that allows me to eat a bit more in the way of chocolate and a bit more in the way of cake and maybe to have a little bit more wine. On the nights when I've decided to have a glass of wine, I can have a few more. Um, and that is forgiving myself for being a bit of a comfort eater. Um, but I know it's really difficult to do that at the moment, which is why I wanted to go to these motivation tips. So let's uh, find the motivation tips, uh, hopefully. <laughs> I've got all of these images uh, on, the, uh, on the bottom of my stream at the moment, uh, and I have to find the right one. I have to find number one, if I can. Just talk among yourselves. <clears throat> if anyone has uh, got any comments to make and uh, has any stories of their own to share, then uh, please do put them in the comments so I can share them with people. So here we go, motivation tip number one. And this is one I always come back to. Uh, and it's a really clear one for many of us at the moment, but it's to work out your why. Why do you want to make this change to your life? Why do you want to lose weight at the moment? For many of us, it is about health. It is about recognizing that the more fit and the more healthy and the closer we are to a healthy weight at the moment, the better shape we're in, in terms of being able to fight not only COVID-19, but a whole range of health conditions. It might be that it's not that simple. It might be that you uh, want to feel better about yourself for other reasons. Uh, you might be looking forward to weddings and other events uh, for the time when we're allowed to have them again. It might be that you want to set an example to your kids or that you just miss being in a healthy shape. The working out what your why is is really important. The next thing to do is to start thinking about what it's going to feel like when you get there. Really start to imagine how it'll feel. 
maybe write it down or find some photographs of what it used to feel like when you were a healthier weight. You can also think about the other side, which is what might happen if you don't get into better shape. Now, this is one to be careful with because I don't want you to feel really bad about yourself or to fear the worst. But it can be quite important to weigh up the pros and cons so that if you are considering um, later on letting your motivation slip and eating a bit more than you'd planned to, um, to think about what will happen if you don't. If you slip one day or two days, you know, it's not going to make a big difference. But if you can't keep an eye on the bigger picture, maybe as I dreaded, you're going to end up putting on more weight. You're going to end up feeling unhealthier and just kind of not feeling good about yourself. Once you've established your why and especially tuned into how good it's going to feel when you get there, work out some reminders that you can come up with. So there might be visual reminders. I often suggest to people that they put a nice image on their laptop or their home screen of their phone of the kind of thing you might want to do when you get to that healthy weight or uh, the kind of places you might want to go or just a lovely beach that you visited before and how you'll feel when you're more confident walking out there. You might also want to uh, start listening to some motivational podcasts about health and about psychology. Uh, I've got podcast archive on the 5-2 Diet Book website, um, but there's lots of other ones that you can look for um, that help you get into the mindset of feeling better. Books too, so obviously I've written quite a lot of books, um, but it might also be um, just really positive books about the way forward. And the final thing to do is to act as if you're already there. So I find this a really powerful idea. If you can act as though you are already that healthy eater, uh, you're already um, feeling good about yourself, you are already a person who is heading towards a healthy weight, then it's putting you into the right mindset. It is encouraging you to adopt all the habits that the healthy you will do as a matter of course when they are at their goal weight and it just makes you feel better you become instead of um that person who is a an overweight person who is worried about the effect on their health you are a healthy person uh emerging i do this with running as well so when i started running again um when I say running again, jogging very slowly again. I was never a runner at school, never a natural runner when I was a, a heavier weight. I started doing the Couch to 5K program, which many of you will have done. I found it really hard going, but I told myself I was a runner. I would run along the seafront where I live down here in Brighton. And I would say to myself as I ran and panted in my head, I wouldn't say it out loud, I am a runner. I am loving this. I would tell myself that even though I really wasn't. And gradually, you know what? I did become a runner. I felt like a runner. So you feel like a healthy person. Act as if you are there already. And you may find that some of those choices that you find difficult actually become more a part of you. So that is tip number one. Tip number two here we go, found it, is start setting up some healthy routines. So have a little think about some of the times that you are worried that you might struggle a bit. Um, plan your week and plan your fast and your non-fast days. Mark them in the calendar, work out which days you're going to aim to do them. Uh, I find that putting them in the calendar or on your calendar on your phone can really help, especially at the moment when days seem to merge into one. If you're not a key worker and you are locked down at home mostly, even though we've had some of the lockdown measures relaxed, things are merging into one a bit. What day What day is it? I don't know. Keep a track and work that out. On a daily basis, setting up some healthy routines, partly that acting as if you're already a, a healthy weight person uh, can work that out. So it is things on a daily basis like sitting down to eat um, rather than eating at your computer or in front of the telly. Um, it encourages you to enjoy your food, to eat it more slowly. Uh, and it's a really healthy thing to do, especially if you are sitting down with other members of the family. Um, it brings you all together to talk about things. Move around a bit more, not necessarily exercise, but just uh, instead of, you know, sitting in front of the telly or playing computer games, you know, where you can get into a really fixed position, quite uncomfortable, 
you know, decide to move around, even if it's just going up and down the stairs once an hour. I've got a reminder set up on my uh, on my Fitbit tells me to get up if I haven't moved around this hour. And I find that helpful. Um, the final thing is sleep. So I don't know about you on this um, lockdown regime, but I found I want to be awake in the waking in the light hours. And with not much to do in the evenings, I tend to go to bed earlier. So try to set yourself a regular sleep time. We know that people who get enough sleep also uh, lose more weight and keep it off. So it's a really important part of your regime and your healthy routine. The final thing to do is to think not just about your daily routines, but also about your weekly routines. So we are talking here about things like sitting down maybe on a Sunday and planning your meals for the week, having a think about what to cook for the rest of the family, what might they enjoy, um, and what can you eat that might be a smaller part of that? You know, is it eating a smaller portion or is it making something uh, separate for them just on the fast day? If you want to make up a batch of soup, that's really easy. You can just eat that at a different time, no explanation needed. And the other thing to do is to maybe build in a bit of time. Again, people quite enjoy doing that on a Sunday uh, to do a bit of goal setting and a bit of a reviewing of your week. If you have come up against some real challenges, whether it's uh, the chocolate drawer or whether it's uh, not eating the leftovers on your uh, kids plate because you don't like waste or because they're a bit tempting, do a bit of a brainstorm with yourself or with a friend on Zoom or on the phone and think about some of the strategies that you could use to try and resist the temptation that might be stopping you from achieving what you want. Another good time to remind yourself of the why. It's another thing you can do in the 52 Facebook group. Uh, lots of people over there who are really experienced have a bit of a brainstorm to think about some of the ways that you can avoid overeating uh, during those non-fasting days, which are often the ones that people find more difficult or you know, strategies to keep going on a fasting day. So I'm going to move on to the next motivation slide when I can find it. As I say, talk among yourselves. And I will be um, looking at your questions in the Q&A. So thanks for the messages. Keep them coming. So motivation tip number three is do something new. So uh, this is a new you that we're hoping to establish. So try some new stuff. Um, Exercise wise, so uh, kind of half of us uh, did the Joe Wicks and, and found it a bit of a hard, hard going. <laughs> but uh, that can be a really good thing. We're really starting to discover how exercise via YouTube or Zoom can be a really good way of doing it. Um, it saves you, especially when you're doing it on YouTube, feeling a bit self-conscious if you haven't done certain things for a while. I do yoga with Adrienne hugely recommended she's fantastic and uh, so is her dog Benji who usually watches baffled as she's doing the yoga I'm quite bad at yoga but no one is watching uh, and Adrienne is incredibly encouraging and she helps me stay a little bit supple I've told you about the couch to 5k um, that was a new thing that I started a couple of years ago after my mum died I was really low feeling stressed I started doing it now I run at least twice a week, often more. I'm loving it. And it's it's my, for my mental health during this lockdown, it's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I am a runner now. Might just be the trampoline, you know? If the kids have got the trampoline in the garden, give that a go. That's exercise and it's fun. Um, arts and crafts. So a lot of us have been getting back into the art and craft thing. Um, it's creative and it also keeps your hands busy. You know, you could be eating, but uh, and nibbling often that that's that's the thing that we do. But actually, if you are working on something creative, it does keep your hands busy. And this is this is what I'm up to at the moment. Uh, proof of the pudding in the sewing. Uh, it's an old tapestry, which I found out from found from the roof. It is perfect for keeping you distracted from food. You can watch the telly. You can chat to people while you're doing it. And um I've actually finished one already uh, while we've been in lockdown. Uh, but you can see that's the bit that I've sewn there. And this is a bit I still got to do. So I know this is going to keep me going for ages. It's kind of not that sophisticated. It's coloured by numbers, uh, but using a needle. Uh, I find it a bit easier than counted cross stitch. Uh, it's really satisfying. And I'm sure this has um, also helped me going 
stay the weight that I want to be during lockdown. Um, you might also be doing something with the brain or something social. So writing, zoomies, zooming, <laughs> zoomies. Zoomies are what my border terrier does when she's running around the living room. Uh, watching movies together, that's become a bit of a big thing. Or reading. In fact, in the corner of your screen, you can see the book that I write under my uh, fiction writing name, uh, Kate Helm. So I can recommend that one. That one came out uh, just last week. The new you can be creative and the new you can try all of these things and enjoy them. And I think doing something new is a really, uh, it's something a lot of us have been embracing in lockdown, but it doesn't have to be that ambitious. It could just be keeping a diary. People are going to be wanting to know in 50 years time what it was like being in the middle of this pandemic. Keep a diary. Uh, do some drawings that no one needs to see. It doesn't have to be something epic like writing a novel or um, running a marathon. It might just be jogging around the block, but the new you deserves it. Right, hide that one and I will find the last motivation tip. That is, I think I had four. That's how good my memory is, these guys. Have you found your motivation, your memory is going in lockdown? Maybe it's just me. Anyway, just tell me in the comments, make you feel better if you have. I think it is partly that going into one. But I did have a fourth set of motivation tips. And this, in a way, is one of the most important ones. And it's being kind to yourself, but also being a little bit firm, like like your best friend, or I put this here, if any of you have ever done dog training, or child training, you'll know that being kind, but firm is really important. Um, so hence the little picture, we are only human. And this is a very stressful time and there will come days when you just can't fast or you do eat an ice cream, maybe two, or you do finish off the biscuits or you finish the cho chocolate bar and you don't feel good about yourself. All right. I have done that a few times in lockdown and I have felt a responsibility sometimes. I think, well, who am I to be kind of dishing out diet advice to people? But... I remind myself that I am only human too. And I remind myself that it's just one day. However, you also have to be firm, which is to say that if you are doing it day after day after day, you are not going to achieve your goals. You are not going to reach your why and be healthier and happier. So it's a bit like what I was saying about the routines and taking a day, a week to look at your goals and to think about how you want to change, um, what you want to improve over the previous week. Be firm with yourself and think, how can I prepare to be more successful this week? What led me to eat that whole chocolate bar or to ditch that fast day? And what can I do to prepare for more success this week? Again, talking to a friend about it or talking to people in the 5-2 group can be really useful. But it might be things like making sure that uh, the treats that you really like, you keep out of the way. You um, put them in a drawer uh, that's different, so you won't automatically reach for it. It might be, and I find this one really useful, giving yourself 10 minutes. So if you feel that you want to eat all the biscuits or all the bread, whatever it is that is your... Uh, weak spot when it comes to comfort eating or stress eating. Just give yourself 10 minutes, set a timer on your phone, whatever it is, and see if you still want it after the 10 minutes. And I would say nine times out of 10, you that's all the time it takes to make yourself take a step back and realize, actually, I don't want that right now. Have a think about some of those strategies. We can share some of those in the group. It is important to know that change is really difficult. Uh, we, as human beings, we kind of like things to stay the same. It's one of the reasons that this lockdown has been so hard for so many of us. Uh, it's unexpected, it's uncertain, it causes us stress. And even positive, healthy change uh, can cause us problems. Uh, it's not easy. But we also know, look at how most of us have adapted to a lockdown situation. If you are um, lucky enough to have the basics, to have a roof over your head and enough money and the right food. Human beings can adapt to most things. And that applies to healthy change as well. You know, if you're acting as if, if you're staying focused on your goals, on your strategy, 
and you're not overstressing yourself, you can make these changes. I really believe this. I was not that person before who would be kind of preaching about this. I would never have dreamed eight years ago before I started this that I would be talking to lots of people about how to be healthier and to stay a healthy weight. And here I am. And so I do think if I can do it, then really any of us can. So I'm going to hide that one. But remember, be be firm, but kind. It, it's the kindness is really important. And I think a lot of us beat ourselves up about not being the right weight. Um, and at a time when the health is a really, you know, health is such a big issue for us, you know, it piles on the guilt. Um, the most important thing is to be honest with yourself, but also to, you know, try and be kind and to analyze some of the reasons why you found it difficult and to summon up all your strength and all your motivation using some of the, the techniques that we've talked about to achieve to make it this time that you can really make a difference and if you know if you've done fasting before and it's worked for you you've fallen off the wagon now is there's no better time to come back to it so it is time for some questions now and i'm going to put a few um on the screen so in order so lisa asked a little while ago now uh what are your thoughts on low carbs on non-fast day thanks okay so low carb dieting can work for many people and it has worked for me in the short term in the past, <laughs> but I couldn't stick to it. And I certainly think that being aware of carbohydrates, the less healthy carbohydrates, the um, white bread, the white rice, uh, the more processed end of the carbohydrate end uh, can be really useful uh, in uh, both reaching a healthy weight and maintaining a healthy weight. Um, they affect some of us more than others. So some people seem to be much more susceptible to um, a high sugar diet, uh, to a diet that's got lots of sweet things in it, even to some of those those um, normal carbs like uh, brown rice even. Some people are much more susceptible. And I think that's partly down to our genes. It's partly down to our gut bacteria. I would expect in the next five to 10 years that we will all become a lot more aware of who really needs to avoid the carbs in order to stay a healthy weight. But even once we know that, it's going to be really hard going. So I would say be carb aware for most of us rather than low carb. You can combine strategies. You can combine 5-2 and intermittent fasting with anything at all. But introduce the changes fairly gradually it's what i was saying before about not overstressing your body and not overstressing your mind by trying to do too many things at once if lower carbohydrate eating works for you and you think you can stick to it good stuff but again it's not beating yourself up we are surrounded by delicious food more than any other time in lockdown and putting too many barriers in your way by saying I've got to do this I've got to do that I've got to do the other it can be really difficult there's another factor when it comes to carbohydrates and especially the healthier end of carbs um, so that can include starchy fruit and veg it can also include uh, brown pasta brown rice um, brown seeded sourdough bread they're really good sources of fiber and fiber is so important for overall health that I worry sometimes about uh, low carb, especially at the extreme end. If you are cutting out uh, most of those sources of fiber and maybe going the full Atkins, as was, well you know, going for meat and eggs and uh, cheese, all of which in a balanced diet are pretty healthy, um, but you're cutting out some of the fiber, well, you're going to end up with um, constipation for a lot of us. And that is kind of not a nice place to be. Uh, and you are going to end up with the temptations um, whenever someone comes at you with a carbohydrate, with a slice of toast. Uh, carbs are nice. You know, so I, I tend to think that unless you've found that way of uh, eating really helps you in the past, that a more balanced approach is better. So being carb aware. There's some evidence as well that um, for people with type 2 diabetes, a low carb diet can be really helpful. Um, but they're in a specialist uh, category and 
I would say combine though, you know, take advice on that one. Um, maybe if that works for you to get your uh, sugars down, that's a separate issue. But for most of us um, who are just trying to maintain a healthy weight without a particular issue in that area, um, carb awareness rather than pure low carb is the way to go. So I will hide that question. Joe, uh, just reiterating what I was saying before about the right mindset being half the battle in my experience. Yeah, um, the mindset. And it's really worth taking the time to consider what you can do to help motivate yourself. Um, I've got a few comments here too. Uh, it's nice to see uh, uh, with some Youssef al Sindi. Have I said that right? In Australia, hello. In Australia, so we're not just uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, slightly different weather conditions uh, for us at the moment, but I really hope you guys are staying uh, safe. Love Australia, hope to be able to come back someday. Um, I've got a question here then from Michelle. How many calories should you have on a fast day? Is it under 500 or under 800? I've just started this today. Well done, Michelle. I hope this really hope this is the start of something that you can stick to uh, for many months, for many years, and that you achieve success. There's lots of different ways of approaching this. We tend to keep it pretty simple in my group. Um, we tend to aim for five to 600 calories. Um, you can increase it. Um, certain other um, books my, my dr michael mosley in his books is talking more about 800 calories some of the time but that can also be something that you he would suggest maintaining over a number of days all i can do is talk about what has succeeded for us and we generally aim for the 500 for a couple of reasons um it makes sure that there is a calorie deficit and quite a substantial one um, so that on the days when you're eating normally the rest of the time, you're still guaranteed a good weight loss. Um, some of us, uh, if you're not very active, if you are not very tall, if you are older, your TDEE, your energy requirement for the day, may be as low as 1200 calories. Um, and if you are then eating 800 on the fasting days, there may not be a big enough difference between what your calorie needs are and what you're eating on those days to achieve um, half a pound of weight loss a week. And we need to stay motivated when we're doing this. We need to see results. Often as well, especially when we're getting used to it, it's difficult to envisage what 800, 500 calories are. And we may go a little bit over. And so if you're aiming for 800 calories, then you might accidentally be going a bit higher. Uh, and if you're doing that again, you may not see the calorie deficit that's giving you the results that you need to stay motivated. Some of us are much bigger and taller and have higher calorie needs. And some of us have been eating a lot more over time. So I would say that if you are somebody who is in that category, um, if you know that you have been eating a lot more than your TDEE, which again, I say you can you can actually find out what that is roughly by going onto the 52dietbook.com calculator page and find that out. It's a rough estimate. If you find out that you have actually been eating, say that you need say about 3000 calories a day because you are larger, you are taller, you are younger, you are very active, you might actually want to adjust your fasting day um, target up up to about 800. Some people could even put it higher than that just while they're getting used to it. But for most of us, I think five to 600 is a really good number to aim at. So I hope that answers your question. And I hope if you're coming to the end of your first fast day, Michelle, it's going well for you. Uh, so I have got, I like this. Uh, Joe is saying, uh, what memory on the, uh, <laughs> when I was talking about how memory uh, can be a real struggle for us. Um, during the fast days uh so i you know <laughs> i'm with you there um so i am looking to see so i'm trying to refresh this and see if there are some more messages here but there aren't uh that i can see uh so i think we are going to draw to a close now i have got a little bit of a horse feeling in my throat and also i've been blathering on for really quite a long time uh i would say uh, that if you've enjoyed this today, uh, please do leave me a message below. 
um, so that I know whether to do it again, whether it might be useful to do it again. Uh, if not, I do hope you have found it useful. Uh, I will just uh, say that you can subscribe to this stream uh, to see if I do some more. Uh, you just have to uh, go below and click the like on the page and also to um, be able to follow me and see what I do next. I am not just doing uh, the 5-2 posts. I am also, as I mentioned, an author of uh, thrillers. This is my latest one that's just out. Uh, and kind of if you felt like uh, supporting me by uh, taking a look over at that, that would be hugely appreciated. It has had some nice reviews. Um, <laughs> Black Mirror in book form, Red Magazine said, the Heat Magazine said it was intense and sinister. So if you want a distraction on your uh, fast days, and I always find a good book can fall into that category. And um, you can buy that at the moment from Amazon or from Waterstones online. And it's also in a real bookshop. It's uh, or in a real shop, not in a bookshop because there aren't any open, but it's actually in Asda at the moment. So if you're in the UK and you feel like picking it up along with your healthy fast day groceries, I would really appreciate it. Uh, it would mean a lot. Uh, the reason for the different name is that um, people go online looking for my thrillers and things like that, and they find my diet books and get really confused. So I have the name Kate Helm, which is named after Bright Helmstone, the old name for Brighton, where I currently live and just love. Honestly, it's, it's been a godsend being by the seaside while this lockdown has been on. I hope you've been able to find a little bit of peace where you are too. Um, if you have kept watching and found something useful, as I say, just comment in the comments under the video so I know whether it's worth doing one again. And if you've got friends who you think would find this broadcast useful, I will be keeping the recording up and I will also be putting it on my YouTube channel. You can find me um, by Googling uh, Kate Wright's books uh, because that is my um, handle. Uh, I am Kate Wright's books on Instagram and Twitter and you sub subscribe or follow this page and also find me over on YouTube where I've got a mixture of interviews with other authors and 5-2 uh, dieting tips. So that is it for me. I'm going to go off. I haven't actually had my fast day tea yet. So I'm going to go off and have a nice big bowl of hot soup uh, before I go to bed. And as I was mentioning before, possibly a nice kiwi fruit as well. Um, good luck this week with your fast days. Um, as I say, I really do think these strategies can help us achieve what we want, which is to be happier and to be healthier. And uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time to watch me this evening and take care. Bye.